So, um, as a um, uh, we, we have this leftover uh, of lecture five. Uh, we have we were supposed to talk about Python data types, but there wasn't enough time, so we are doing it now. The point of this discussion was uh, twofold. First of all, to introduce the language Python, and uh, on the other hand, to show that some languages have uh, um, first, as as primitives of the language, evolved data types, which have special uh, syntax and makes programming much more convenient, and programs that use such data types much more readable. Uh, you may. <clears throat> Um, you, you may argue that uh, these data types can be implemented in C as well, um, uh, and, and that's true, but in that case, they would be uh, structures, um, right, and the API would be implemented as functions, and in the end, you would be calling C functions wh whose arguments are uh, structures or pointer to structures that doesn't make programs very readable, and you won't find that kind of programming very convenient in general. We would have the efficiency um, um, of those data types and uh, a part of the convenience because uh, you can do a lot in one operation, but the writing, the syntax would not be perceived as um, very elegant. So uh, we want to see uh, by contrast how uh, this is handled in Python. Um, and let's have a first um, first encounter with Python. If you install it, um, it will install as a shell, and it can be run from the command line by just uh, uh, running the command Python. But if you're in Windows and uh, you install it as an application, it uh, will be available um, from uh, the Start menu, and it will when you click on it, it will open as this window, the Python. Uh, shell. Notice this prompt, right? So this this is the typical um, Python prompt, um, and it presents a, a read eval print loop, which is very elegant and convenient. Um, those of you who have learned Scheme before will find it somewhat familiar. Just that the syntax is more convenient than the one in Scheme. But we can pass in a command and see the result immediately. For instance, we can type in two plus three. And we're going to see the result uh, five. Um, all right, we can assign a value to a variable x equals four, for instance. We can import uh, the math module, for instance, and then we can call uh, a mathematical function on the variable that we have defined. Um, and uh, we can write simple loops, for instance. Uh, we can write things like for i in range um, from um, for i in range from zero to ten. Not completely sure that this is correct. Hopefully, it is. Um, we can say, yeah, for instance, friend i. And um, right, uh, no, notice the fact that that uh, we typed a column to expect um, uh, to to indicate that that a nested block is coming, and then uh, the cursor stayed a bit indented, showing that we are about to type a nested block. All the uh, statements that we type at the same at the same level of indentation will be part of the nested block. I'm just going to put here another one, friend. Um, I star I star I. Let's say, and then maybe print of uh, just a space. I'm not sure whether print puts a new line at the end. And then we're finished. So I'm just going to press the enter a second time to indicate that this is all the program that we want. And notice the fact that um, uh, there's a printout, right? The print printed about uh, groups of digits and their squares. Notice the fact that we have ob uh, Python is object oriented, right? So whenever we have we want to iterate, we have to provide an iteratable object, which is what this expression is producing, the range from 0 to 10. Everything is, uh, I'm jumping the gun a bit, but everything is object oriented. For instance, a number 3 is um, uh, object oriented. We can see the contents of a 
uh, object with the command there. So if I say dir3, I can see the methods inside and you can say, for instance, that inside here there, there's a method called add and this allows me to write three dot double underscore add double underscore four and will produce the result seven. In fact, so three plus seven, which is the familiar expression of three plus four, sorry, that we're, we were used to, this is actually the just syntactic sugar for this expression, which calls the method double underscore add double underscore this one from inside the object three, right? So this one in turn would be rewritten as this expression and then evaluated. We're going to talk more uh, about uh, Python uh, objects later. So uh, let's dive into the data types. Oh, another thing that I should show you before. Uh, what you can do here is open a new window. So a new window opens. You can write your program. So I can go here. Uh, besides that, you can actually, pressing Alt P will repeat, will repeat previous commands. And then you can take this let's say control c8 type now control v you can put it here you can save it right into control s now some uh, program let's call it x.py and then it can be run run module and you can run your program And uh, this is how you should develop your programs, right? Not typing them from the from directly, but rather writing them in uh, this editor window and running them uh, with F5. Uh, all right, but I'm going to close this now, and we're going to evaluate expressions that use um, high-level data types. So uh, the first one that we encounter is list, and this is again very similar to the um, list of um, of uh, scheme right so we can uh, uh, but the syntax is different and the syntax is more convenient uh, so this is a list and it's a value right can be assigned to a variable and then whenever the variable is evaluated later it will produce this value um, elements of the list can be retrieved by an index so and now this appears similar to an array but remember it's a list we can insert elements into it and we're going to see that later so a0 will give us the first element our zero indexed a3 will give us the third element so having the zero the first the second so this is the zero the first the second the third and this is what we get here Notice also that the elements inside a list do not need to have the same type. These are strings. And strings, as in scripted, most scripted languages, they can be either enclosed in simple quotes or in double quotes, right? This makes it easy whenever you need to uh, define the string containing a double quote to enclose it in simple quotes, and whenever you need the string containing a simple quote to put it in double quotes, right? And, and uh, both of them would be legal strings. You can index strings from the end. So this is the second element from the end, right? This would be element minus one. This would be element minus two. And this is what we get. We can get sublists from one to minus one. And we can use the first element as an index um, to from, from the left and the second uh, element of the range to be counted from the right, right? Um, we can uh, not specify the first element of the range and then that will be by default the start, right? This will be concatenation of lists. So in Prolog you would write a pen. So notice how easy it is. Plus, the plus operator is overloaded and will perform concatenation of strings. We can multiply strings. We can have a string. Uh, we can have a list repeated several times, right? So um, uh, we would take the first 
three elements uh, of the string. So notice that when we put a range here, that range is not is not inclusive, right? So it's from one up to, but not including to minus one. And here is from the front up to and not including the third element. And the same here, right? It's from the front up to and not including the second element. So essentially the sublist is only these two. And then we later concatenate these two. All right, and in all this process, A has not been changed. So if we evaluate A again, we essentially get the same list. Uh, we can uh, change on the fly an element of a list. So uh, A2 can be increased by 23. And notice the result in the list here. Right. So lists are mutable objects, unlike prologue. Um, all right, items can be replaced on the fly. So we can say uh, a um, between zero and two, this sub list should be replaced by one and 12. And we can see that these two elements have been replaced. Notice here something else that, um, that uh, this is a comment. And then if you type enter after a line, and it is not a full command. If you're in the you're in the command line, not in the not not here. Here you won't see you won't see the three dots. But if you are at the command cmd.com prompt, the shell will also print these as a continuation, showing you that you haven't finished your command and you have to uh, type more stuff to get to get some result out of it. So notice now that we evaluate a and we have. Um, this uh, new value, we can remove some element. So I can take this sub list and make it the empty list, and then I get a list of two elements. We can insert some, right? So we can take the empty list that is here, specified here, and turn it into a list of two elements. So this would insert these two elements in between these Two, right? So A11 is the empty list residing right here. And that will be converted into the list of these two elements, and this results in an insertion. Uh, you can do even more stuff. You can insert a copy of A at the beginning, right? So this is the empty list residing right at the beginning right here. There's a the, the empty list residing right before one, two, three. And that we can change into A itself and then we get a duplicated list, right? So this and this, right? Each of them are the previous value of A and the new value of A is this entire list. We can clear the entire list, right? So we don't specify the beginning and end of the range, meaning that the beginning is the beginning of the list, the end is the end of the list, right the end, right? Not up to the last element and excluding it. But if I don't say anything here, it's beyond the last element. So if I set that to be the empty list, effectively I clear the list. After that, A becomes the empty list. Um, okay. Uh, let's set A to something new, yet another list. There's a function that returns the length, called length. This is expectable, of course. We can uh, take another list, Q3, and define P to be 1, Q4, right? In spite of the fact that Q is a list, right? What we have now is a list inside another list. Right, this is a list whose elements, some of them are other lists. However, list P has only three elements. All right, so that's it. That's the length. We can look at uh, P1. It's going to be the entire list two three, and now we can do double indexing, right? Because we have a list of lists. So I take the first element of P, and that being a list, I can take the zeroth element of the 
first element of P. Um, now, uh, we have used the plus, the plus operator to um, to uh, uh, concatenate two lists, but there is uh, plus is syntactic sugar for a pen. So if we go in here and I define, I take dear of a list empty possibly, right? You will see a pen here. And then I can say either one, two, plus three, four, and that will give me the list one, two, three, four, or I can say one, two, dot append, applied to three, four, Oh, there's a difference. Plus, there's a difference between plus and notice that there's an add here, right? So, so, so if I say x is assigned one, because one two has been changed in one two three four, but that has been lost because I haven't assigned it anything, right? So if I say x dot one two, and then x dot append uh, list three four, I will get a new value for x. Uh, and 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 we when we append we append just one element. I'm sorry. So let's do this again. X is assigned one two and then we do X append Three, and that will produce this one, two, three, and then we can append four, and that will produce x equals one, two, three, four. Um, so there's a difference between plus and append. Plus will take two lists and produce a completely new list that is the concatenation of the original two lists, whereas append is a member of the uh, list object and we will, will change the current list by appending an element to it. All right, so this is what happens here, right? We take P1, we append one element, and you see this element appears inside the list that is a member of the outer list. Now, obviously, P and Q are sharing P and Q are aliens, right? Q is a part of P. So even though we have been accessing P1, do remember that P1 is all the time equal to Q. So every change to P1 will entail a change to Q. And thus, Q has been changed by all these operations that were performed on P1. Now, much more interesting are list comprehensions, right? We can take a list and then produce a new list from the original list. For instance, if we have a list of numbers, this one, vec, we can say three, three times x for x in vec. And then we produce the list of all the elements in vec, each multiplied by three, which is this one. Uh, we can produce lists of lists, right? So having x in vec, we can produce the list of pairs, but each pair is a list actually, x and x square, right? This is the squaring oper operator. This is the power operator, right? And, and power two is square. So then we will get a list of uh, sub of sublists. Each sublist is uh, um, has two elements. The an original uh, element of vec and its square. Uh, and we can keep going, right? Fresh fruit, this is a, um, this is a, um, a list of strings. Each, each string has a few white spaces either on either of the sides, right? And we want to remove the white space. So we can say w.strip for w and fresh fruit. And then we see the list where all the white spaces, all the leading and trailing white spaces have been removed. We can add Boolean conditions, right? So we can 
filter out all the elements that are not greater than 3. So we're going to get the uh, multiplication by 3 of only those elements that are greater than 3. Uh, similarly, we can get the multiplication by 3 of all the elements that are strictly smaller than 2, and there's none, right? So then the return will be the empty list. Instead of producing sublists here, right? member list, we can produce tuples, pairs. So this is the introduction of pairs, which are similar to records, just that they're positional in nature, right? This is the first element, and this is the second element of a tuple. So when we say for x and vec, we produce, instead of sublists, we can produce tuples containing numbers and their squares. We can represent a matrix like this, right? A list of lists. And then um, we can transpose the ma matrix uh, using this expression, right? So we take the list of indices, 0, 1, 2, right? And we create a list of row sub i for row in this map and for i in this list of squares, right? So notice now that we are nesting the list comprehension. We have a list comprehension, right? And that's nested inside another list comprehension, and we'll produce the transposition of the original matrix. Now we have seen tuples, and um, um, we are well, gonna talk more a bit more about it, about them. So tuples are simply separated by comma. Sometimes we use brackets before and after if we need, if there's confusion about the operator precedence, right? But the brackets are not compulsory. Uh, we can index tuples as well. And tuples are in fact arrays. We are dynamically creating an array of three elements and we are indexing them. Access to elements of tuples is constant. Access to elements of lists is O n, where n is the position. All right. So uh, now uh, you're finding out uh, how this this works. Um, right. Uh, we can evaluate a tuple. Elements of a tuple do not need to uh, have the same type as uh, before. Um, okay. There is such a thing as the empty tuple. All right, we can find the size. We can find the size of uh, um, different tuples. And in fact, uh, we can create a tuple of one element. And to do that, we need to put a trailing comma here, right? Otherwise, we would just create a simple value, right? Remember, tuples are arrays. Now, the interesting thing is the simultaneous assignment. So this T has three elements. So we have a tuple of variables equals to a tuple of values, and each variable will get a value in the process. That's very neat. It's a consequence of tuples rather than being a special instruction. instruction. Another interesting, uh, and, and obviously we won't be able to insert and expand tuples since they are arrays, not, not as easy as with lists. Right? But the upside of, of tuples is constant access uh, to an element. Uh, Python sets. So we can define a set. Notice that in the original definition, we can have repeated elements. But when we're going to print this variable, we're going to see that duplicated elements, duplications have been removed. Each element appears a single time. We have a membership operation. Orange and basket is a Boolean uh, expression, which is either true or false, right? And you can see both kinds of results, a true and a false. Um, we can create uh, sets from strings. So uh, each letter will go as one element of the set here, right? So you notice. Set A, and then we can perform 
all the operations that the set has. This will be the difference. All right. This will be the uh, union. This will be the intersection. This will be the um, uh, the mutual difference. So letters that appear in neither but not in both. Right? Uh, and uh, of course we can use set comprehensions. So we can say x for those values of x in abracadabra and notice that on the fly the string is converted into a set if x is not in b. And again this string is converted into a set. And we can build all sorts of set expressions and set comprehensions. And finally, we have dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries work kind of like arrays, just that the indices can be arbitrary elements. And of course, um, Python will try to turn this into hash values and have uh, hash indexing. Right, and try to retrieve these values in constant time. Of course, that uh, the the hash values will be placed into buckets, and depending on how crowded the uh, buckets are, uh, the constant time retrieval might or might not work. Um, they can be defined or thought of as sets of mappings. So this is a mapping, and we have a set of mappings. All right, but when the uh, when Python will see this uh, operator, it will understand the mapping, and it will understand that this is a dictionary, and it can be indexed by any element. Uh, this sort of simulates a phone list, right? Um, and uh, whenever we have data types like this, they will be allocated memory, and uh, of course, if they're not, if they're if they're allocated in memory and the variables are global variables, this is this is a global variable, they will stay in memory forever until Python is stopped. Uh, so we may want to explicitly deallocate uh, or, or delete certain mappings. Right. So this will delete a mapping from this will delete a mapping from the dictionary. Right. Uh, this mapping essentially will disappear right and then uh, whenever we check right we check later this mapping is no longer in this value we can always easily add new values by just using the new index here right we assign to a new index and then a new mapping is created we can list all the keys and whenever we put a list here it will turn it into a list. Uh, we can uh, get a sorted list, right? We can uh, use the membership operation, right? So whenever we do this, it will check whether this is a key of tab. Uh, we can convert a list. So this is a list of pairs. It can be converted into a dictionary. And uh, um, we can create, we, we can create a dictionary by just uh, uh, defining a set of methods, right? So whenever I define something that uh, is like this, is taken as a mapping, we put inside a set or even a set comprehension in this case, right? And what we get is a dictionary. Um, we have alternative syntax, right? So this is a tuple of, um, well, it's not really a tuple. This is a procedure call where instead of positional parameters, we have named parameters, right? We are naming this parameter. This is the formal argument, and we are explicitly giving it this value. And this is 
And uh, diction the dictionary procedure works like this, right? You can take an arbitrary couple of um, um, uh, of, uh, of formal argument assignment, right, and turn that into a dictionary. So we have a lot of syntax that um, is trying to make uh, the use of these data types as elegant as possible. And with all this, we have uh, a variety of um, looping techniques, right? Um, uh, of course, you can create your own dictionary. So if we go in here, right, I can say dictionary is um, um, right x one y two and what's wrong? Oh, 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 X, X is, is not is an identifier, so I have to put a string here. It has to be all constants, right? So then we have do drd, and uh, we can see we can see there's a lot of methods, right? Uh, one of it is this items, which produces an iterator, right? So if I say uh, d dot items. Right, I'm going to get uh, this thing, right, which is in fact a representation. You, you may be uh, 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 tempted to think that this is a list. It's not a list, right, because this is a function applied to a list, right. This is the this is a representation, an internal representation. It's an iterator, right. An iterator can appear in a for loop. So it's something that we can put after the in keyword, right? We say for in, right here, we need an iterate. And this iterator produces pairs. So these two variables will be assigned to the components of a pair, of the many pairs that appear here, and they would be printed, right? So you would uh, see these outputs, right? So K becomes Galahad and V the pure, and then a printout is produced. And then later K becomes Robin and V becomes the brave, and then another output is produced, right? And then the uh, the iterator is exhausted. So the um, statement ends. Um, all right, uh, we can perform an enumeration this is another way of producing an iterator. It takes a list and pairs every element of the list with its rank, right? So when we say for i, v in enumerate, right, i will become the rank of this guy and v will become the value of this guy. And then later we move on to this guy and then later to this guy, right? So we get this out. Um, and we can turn two lists into a list of pairs. So this is a list, this is another list, this will be a list of pairs. The first, the first pair in here will be made up of the uh, two first elements of the two lists, right? The second pair will be made up of the two second elements of the two lists, and the two third elements of the two lists, and so on, right? And uh, now we can even see a bit more, right? We can see that a string has as a, an object, right, has a format number. And inside this string, we can specify positional uh, positional parameters, right? And then this will uh, replace the, the zero. The value of Q will replace the zero. The value of A will replace the one here, right? And uh, these Q and A actually iterate through the pairs. So we're going to get this kind of kind of power. Okay. Um, range. We can have a start of the range, an end of the range, and a step. And we can even reverse a range. Um, right? And uh, that will be printed. 
um, then um, he can take a list and he can sort the list, right? So he can uh, convert it into a set and then sort the elements into the set and produce an iterator, right? Which will put the elements in um, uh, in, in alphabetical order. And you don't necessarily need to uh, turn the, the list into a set. But we want to do it because we want to uh, have to remove all the duplicates, right? So converting this list into a set will remove all the duplicates. The apple that appears here will be converted to a single occurrence. And the orange, the same, right? Uh, and then we take the set and we sort it out and we produce this color. All right. So, uh, this is what we wanted to experience. We wanted to experience um, a nicer way of um, working with high-level data types. Uh, once you experience it in Python, you will go back to Java, and you will probably um, like it less, like Java programming less than you would like Python programming. Uh, of course, all these data structures that we have discussed and all the operators of, on data structures are available in Java. It's just not so easy and convenient to um, write. Uh, Python seems to give you more directly at your fingertips. More is available at your fingertips than any um, other language. So I hope you will enjoy. Um, programming in Python. The next tutorial will focus on that. Um, enjoy your break and um, see you in the week after.